Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you uh, how to do a TOC analysis, but before we get started, I just wanted to briefly review what TOC is, why we care about it, and why calculating is so important. So TOC, which stands for Total Organic Carbon, is pretty much what the name implies. It's the total amount of organic carbon you have in a sample. Uh, normally for lab measurements, uh, before we measure TOC, we clean the sample with an organic solvent. And that removes uh, pretty much everything except for the kerogen, uh, plus or minus some of the pyrobitumen. Um, kerogen, which is what we're interested in, is basically all the dead critters, bugs, and plant life that got preserved in the sedimentary record. And when we heat those up through burial, that's when the kerogen undergoes thermal maturity and converts into oil and gas, which is what we get paid to find. Um, so why do we care about TOC? Well, if a shell doesn't have any TOC, then it's not a source rock, and we're not going to look to drill that zone. If a uh, shell has a really high TOC value, we may suspect that it's uh, immature, and we've not converted a lot of that kerogen to uh, oil or gas yet, uh, so we might not want to drill in that particular location. And uh, because TOC is really low density, if you don't correct your porosities for it, you might overestimate your storage properties uh, during your petrophysical analysis. So those are just a few of the reasons why we care about TOC. So today we're going to look at uh, a number of different ways to measure TOC. We're going to do calculations for Schmoker's method. Uh, we're going to use some of the other density-based estimates. Uh, we're going to use Vernick's method. And we're going to look at the PASI sonic neutron and density methods, uh, which you often hear referred to as the delta log R methods. So uh, with that said, let's get started. Uh, today I'm going to be using uh, Dynomics Petrophysical Insights platform for my analysis, uh, but you can use whatever software you like. The principles are, are all the same. So taking a look at the window, I just want to walk you through what's on the screen so you'll know what I'm doing when I'm entering parameters and moving things around. So up here in the top left area, we have our CPI parameters. This is where I'll be entering in some of the values and where we'll see zone-by-zone uh, -zone changes occurring. Uh, below this I have a cross plot uh, and I'll, I'll get into more detail on this later. And all over here to the right I have our well log panel. So just moving ref left to right so you know what curves we have. Here I have my gamma ray track shown on the left and we're going to use this to define where we want to calculate our TOC. We have our resistivity track, uh, and this is crucial to the PASI methods. This is where we'll set our uh, inorganic shell resistivity. And then we have our three PASI tracks, uh, which are our sonic, our density, and our neutron overlay tracks. Uh, the reason these have their own designated track is the PASI method is actually a, a visual overlay method. Um, so, so you need to be able to, to see it to make sure you're properly calibrated. Uh, and, and that's in contrast to like the Schmoker methods or some of the other empirical uh, density methods that are just a straight correlation. Um, the Wernick uh, method, there's, there's no overlay with that, even though there are some parameters that we enter. So I've just shown those results by themselves here in this track. We have all the, the density methods. Our three PASI methods, the outputs are shown here in, the, uh, in this track. And then our final... TOC curve is given in this track. <clears throat> so uh, let's let's start looking at parameters. So start off with our gamma ray. I personally only want to calculate my TOC in my shells. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here to my parameters and say, all right, I don't want to calculate uh, TOC in any unit that has a shell value of less than 70 on the gamma ray. Uh, if you want to set this at zero, you can, then you'll calculate it for all of your um, all of your intervals. Uh, however, you know I know this middle interval here in the Alston chalk uh, doesn't doesn't have any TOC in it, so I, I'm not even going to bother analyzing it uh, for that because I, I don't want it to to maybe accidentally you know mistake uh, some washout for for TOC. <clears throat> uh, for my resistivity, as I said, this is crucial to the PASI methods. And uh, we, we can set this by either interactively dragging and dropping the parameter, uh, or we can enter in a value. And the concept here is that you want to find an inorganic shell, like the one above us, like the one above the Alston chalk here at the top of the screen. And you want to set the resistivity value so it roughly lines up with that. And so I'm going to drop it right there. 
Uh, that's a value of uh, about three. So I'm just going to enter that in and now we'll see the rest of the zones here are now aligned. Now <clears throat> we, we also need to set our sonic value for the uh, for the passy overlay. And so you know once again we can we can drag and drop this uh, value. So you know we see here we've got a value of around 81. So we're going to enter that in. And really with these analyses we want to use the same value for all intervals um, because it, it's really about you know setting these values in an inorganic shell so we can understand them in an organic shell. And it's the same uh, concept here for our density curve as well. So we're just going to drop that. We want to drop it right on the right hand side here. So we dropped it at 2.59. So we're going to we're going to enter that in. Make that our default for all the zones. And once again we'll repeat this with our neutron. Uh, we're going to put that value right at a uh, we can probably push that a little bit further maybe we're going to put it right there that's at about 23 percent so now we're going to put that as our default for the rest of the zones okay so now that we've done that we have now uh, created these passy overlays and if we look at it we see that there's that there's no uh, crossover um, here in our between our sonic and our S log R, or delta log R curve. And so that, that's in our organic shell and in our uh, reservoir interval. But then we come down here to our organic shell and we see we have this red shading occur between the curves uh, in all three of these methods. And that is our uh, TOC estimate um, using these methods. So so, so there we go. We can visually have a quick look. Yes, this is where the TOC is, and yes, that does correspond to the highest gamma ray values. Um, you know, we we still have the Vernick method here, um, and we can either take the value straight from our Roby baseline that we used from uh, that we used in the Passy method, or we can take what we calculated during our V clay analysis, which is about 2.58. And now we've set the parameters for all these methods. Uh, if we had a core, we may want to turn on some of our uh, advanced features here and use either a multiplier or shifter to, to move our results left to right, um, you know, to try and get a match to our core if we needed to. But since we don't have that in this well, we're, we're just going with it based on our calculations. So as we go through this, uh, you know, what we can see is there are some zones where we either have bad data or very high uh, TOC and and what we see is that there's a lot of washout here on the density curve uh, we would have identified this at the start of our analysis and so it really tells us that some of these density methods probably aren't suitable for this log where where it looks like they have uh, some washout you know we have some washout down here and down here and so it's giving us these artificially high values where we see the neutron and the sonic uh, are much more stable curves and have given us a much uh, more sensible result here. And so finally, if you know, if we wanted to uh, to come in and manually set these, we could come in and manually set them uh, zone by zone if we wanted to. But I'm just going to go with the uh, passy neutron for all of these zones. And then finally, if you want to see how zones compare, I find it useful to often look at these in a cross plot. So here we're actually looking at the TOC from the PASI neutron method versus the TOC from the uh, PASI sonic method. And what we see here is essentially unity slope. So it tells us these two methods are in very good alignment with each other, which is also what we see down here uh, in our log plot. <clears throat> So uh, with that said, that is how we do a TOC analysis. I uh, hope this was useful to you. And if you'd like to uh, try doing a TOC analysis yourself using the Dynomics platform, uh, just reach out to me and I can get you started today. Uh, you can either send me a message via LinkedIn or you can send me an email at csnow at Thank you and happy interpreting.